All right. So, last video, we were cutting things out in the foreground. Depending on how you do it, it's going to be varying degrees of success. Remember, you always have the direct eraser tool to be able to help you. You can control the hardness of it, the size of it, and the opacity of it to directly impact how things are seen. And all the tools, whether it's the magic wand, the magnet lasso, the quick selection tool, the object selection tool, all these different things that Photoshop tries to give you to make selections easier, they're always going to have a trade-off in terms of their accuracy and in terms of how comfortable you are using them. So I always try to show you the direct solutions when you really need to control it. And that usually just comes down to, to using the lasso with the feathering option. I use a feather one for the foreground. I might do additional layers of feathering as I get into the middle ground and background if I need to use this tool this way. And then you also have a very direct use of your last of your eraser. I like to use soft edged. And once you get rid of the hard edges, you can kind of blend with different opacities to show. Okay, so I'm very aware of the edges of my image. And I'm thinking actually I want to extend this one or move this one a little bit down because I like this bottom edge here. And that's why I left myself some extra space because sometimes you want to use a little bit more than maybe you originally had. So I'm going to shift my bottom edge down to here because I love these little roots of the, the fungus kind of poking through and the drapes of the spider webs. Okay, now I'm looking at things that just don't quite fit as well. And the coloring of this doesn't. So now we're going to do some internal compositing. So I like the foreground here quite a bit, but everything behind that front rock and that water, I'm going to duplicate, lasso, now that it's cut out, and put onto a layer on top, like I did with the trees in the background. And by doing that, I can do layer adjustments again. So now I've kind of broken the image up. And this time I'm going to darken that back layer, the midtones, maybe limit the shadows a little bit so they look a little mistier. That's all on levels. And then I'm going to go to color balance. I'm going to shift it a little bit more towards reds. So it kind of sits back and a little bit more towards blues. You can see how that's starting to make a big difference. Maybe a tiny bit towards magenta. The highlights, I'll put some yellows back into it. Uh, maybe not. Maybe some cyan. No. And now in hue saturation, I'm just going to take its saturation down because it's moving into the background. And you see how much of a difference that made. So even though these were from the same layer, by internally compositing it and separating that out as its own, I can mask it and make it match this setting better. Then there's another problem with the lighting. Where is the lighting on this rock coming from? There's this kind of diffused light forest, so that seems too strong. So now we get to the dodge and burn tools. We've talked about direct adjustments for whole layers or whole selections. Dodge and burn allow you to, to play with levels and saturation as though you're using a soft edged eraser, like right on the layer. So the dodge and burn tools, they look like this. They're a couple steps down from the eraser. There's dodge, burn, and sponge. Burn is the one I'll show you first. It makes the most sense. When you burn something, it darkens, right? So just like the eraser, I'm going to use pretty large, 0% hardness. But it's not like the eraser. I'm not going to use 100% exposure. Think of that as opacity. 
Instead, I'm always going to use under 20. So I'll usually use around 15 or so. And now I'm going to go to what I want to take light away from. And I'm going to do it on the midtones. I'm going to make my brush pretty big. And now I can burn it, burn this edge, darken those shadows, because that light source doesn't quite make sense. So that's the midtones. I can burn the highlights, which will take the, the brightest parts of that histogram and burn it down. But this tool can move pretty fast. So I can also just use my eraser and soften, whoops, soften the edge. Let me get rid of what's behind it for the time being, just so I can erase it away completely. And find the treatment of the rock edge that makes sense for my environment. So it's going to get quite a bit softer as it's pushed back. And then once I've gotten rid of the hard edge, I can even go to lower opacity erasers and kind of let it fade in a little bit in some places if it looks too even, which is often a problem with digital art. Because when our eyes take in scenes, they don't always take in all the sharp edges around everything. They kind of average things out. So that's why squinting is always really helpful. In compositing. So that shadow shouldn't travel along that side of the rock. It's going to soften along that edge. And by erasing it with low opacity, it even gives me a little bit of kind of reflection. Now, what if I really want to burn in some shadows? Go to the midtones. I can just layer it up where I want more shadow to exist, like so. Now, the problem is I have my original layer behind it. So once I'm happy with that, I then need to use my lasso again and just take that selection away from the original layer. So instead, it transitions into my new layer. And then I want to make sure it transitions well. And I didn't select it carefully enough. So this is a better way to select it. I'm going to go back in time before I did that. And I'm going to use the magic wand to select around my original internal composite. Nope, wrong layer. So this will select the empty space around it. And then I'm going to say select inverse. And then just delete those pixels from the original layer. So I get that edge right. So it all makes sense with the skills we're learning. It's just kind of combining them all. And then all those little things I massaged at the edges I can delete. And then I can put them back and it will look a lot more dimensional. Now a little fine tuning, low opacity blending. If I want to get a little bit more shape into this shadow. I can erase that low opacity and reveal a little bit of that background. Remember, it's all about pixel dimension and what you're able to see not letting things be blasted out. Yeah, not too bad. Okay, now the other tools. We've talked about burn. 
We're going to use these a lot when we work on our creatures next. What if we want to add highlights? Well, that's where the dodge tool comes in. You use it the same way as burn, but it adds highlights back in. So if I want a little bit more highlight on this rock, I can put it in. A little bit more highlight here. So you have a lot of control. These are photo editing tools. I think, honestly, this rock, I just want to, it's just so strong. I just want to fade it out a little bit. So I can actually take my eraser really big and soft and just take a little opacity away from it. And that will help it set back. I might want to even internally composite some trees on top of it like this. Take a chunk from this forest, duplicate it, move it over the top of my rocks. There we go. That helps blend the color, helps it fade into the distance a little bit better. I can stretch that, get some of that forest, like it's like trees are casting shadows on it. That can help, and then of course I can erase away any hard edges. That brought in. So there's all kinds of internal compositing that can help. Let's see. Other places I might just want really low opacity erasing and transitioning, like maybe bring a little bit more color into the landscape around these foreground mushrooms. And then I want to burn some of these trees. So dodge and burn. Make that trunk a lot darker. See how effective these tools can be. to match the lighting. So Dodge, Burn, and another tool called Sponge that's with it, they're like your direct adjustments of levels and hue saturation, but in a tool rather than as an overall adjustment. All right, I'm going to burn a little bit of this coastline here. So what if like this edge of the sulfur pool I just feel is too saturated? That's where sponge comes in. The sponge tool is like dodge and burn, but it has to do with saturation. You can set it to either intensify the colors where you click or to desaturate the colors. I use it the same way, always less than 30, less than 20. Soft edged, fairly large. And I'm going to desaturate a little bit from this layer. And it kind of grays it out a little bit. It was like that, now it's like that. Right, you can see before and after you use the sponge tool. Now I need these trees to be sharper. So what I'm going to do is make a duplicate of one of my original layers and bring that up above everything. And then I'm going to cut the trees I need to be sharper out with my one pixel feathered lasso. Whereas before I was just really casual with it to see if it would work. But these trees are a bit of a focal point of the middle ground. 